A smoker's tale. Today I get to share with you a smoker's tale. Somebody that smoked inside their house for 15 years and what it did to the inside of their house. Hi there, I'm Angela Brown and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question and I get to help you find an answer. Now today's show is brought to us by housecleaning360.com. And if you do have smoke inside your house and you're getting ready to sell your house on the market, you're going to need a whole bunch of extra help and you can find people to help you on housecleaning360.com. Now, if you provide painting service or carpet cleaning or house cleaning or home organization or junk and hoarding removal, you can find these people on housecleaning360.com. And if you provide these services and you're not listed, go list your business right now. There are free and paid listings. All right, housecleaning360.com. Okay, on to today's show, which is not a question, but it is an answer. All right, so we did a show on marijuana smell and how to get rid of the 420 smell inside your home if you're doing an Airbnb turnover. And it sparked a lot of controversy and a lot of interest and a lot of conversation on YouTube and in our Facebook groups. And there was somebody that wrote into the show and they had an interesting story. And I wanted to share that with you today. So with their permission, I would like to read to you the email that they sent. Hi, I'm a smoker who smoked in his house for 15 years, and I never thought about selling my house. Nor did I know the degree that tobacco would embed itself in every nook and cranny and crevice. The time came where I wanted to sell my house, and I figured a wall washing with warm vinegar and a fresh coat of paint would suffice. Wrong! First thing the realtor mentioned upon entering my house is that there was a strong smell of tobacco, which I couldn't smell. I was nose blind. He said it would lower the value of my house and it would repel my potential buyers. I researched more and I commenced cleaning all the walls with borax and hot water. I pulled out lots of yellow tar, so I'm now set, right? Wrong. <laughs> Back to researching and I fell into the gold mines, painters forums and carpet cleaning forums. The painter's experience revealed that painting with kills is the solution. Kills is a brand name. But I left that as a last ditch option. Though the carpet cleaners forum, I tracked down a janitorial supply outlet near me and I popped in to see if they could hook me up with a cleaning solution. I mentioned my scenario and the guy said, I have just the product for you. And he went to the back shop and he brought out a product called Tobac Attack. And I'll leave links in the show notes so you can find it because our listener was kind enough to provide those for me. So yay. All right, he continues. I bought a gallon and commenced spraying my house with a two gallon garden sprayer. Don't worry, I had proper safety garb on. Goggles, ventilator, hat, no bare arms and legs. Then I had my neighbor come over and do a sniff test. The result, the stink factor was reduced by about 50%. After reading about Pro Restore's three-step smoke elimination program, I went back to the janitorial supply and I, I inquired. This time they hooked me up with a product called Atomic Degreaser. So again, I commenced washing all the walls again. The neighbor came back and did another sniff test and the result was they could barely smell any tobacco stench. By the way, I went ballistic OCD and I cleaned every nook and cranny and I was blown away at where I was pulling deep yellow tar from. The biggest surprise to me is that the bottom underneath sides of my front door. What on earth? This stuff gets everywhere. My advice is smoke outside and go straight to the kills paint as a solution. By the way, I tried pans of vinegar, charcoal, baking soda on the carpet, and who knows what else. The tobacco stink just laughed at him. <laughs> okay. That is a very interesting response. And I love the fact that the smoker was willing to try so many different options and research so many different choices as far as getting rid of the smell and then calling in an outside person to do the sniff test, right? How else are you going to find out if your house stinks if you are nose blind, <laughs> as they suggested? So the suggestion is, yeah, there, there's a lot of tar that gets stuck on everywhere. It even gets stuck in your computer keyboards and in the remote controls of your TV remote. It gets everywhere. All right, so the problem is this. When you smoke, and we'll go back to the Airbnb show that we did the other day, how to get rid of the 420 smell. When that show came out, I got bombarded with emails and there were violent Airbnb hosts because I had said in that video that some Airbnb hosts charge $50 to $75 
for a reset fee if you smoke inside their property. And they came back and they're like, we do not charge 50 to $75. We charge $500. And they're like, don't you dare tell people they can get off with 50 or $75. We can't clean the place for that price. I was wrong. Okay, the prices have gone up. If you smoke in somebody's house, which is absolutely a no-no in most houses, there will be a steep cleaning fee because you do have to go through so many hoops and you have to have your furniture professionally cleaned that sits in the drapes and on your sofas and your fabric couches and in your throw rugs and your oriental carpets and things like that. It has to all be professionally cleaned. And by the time you hire a dry cleaner to clean your drapes and you hire a carpet cleaner to come in and clean your carpets and your upholstery, you're talking well over $75. So I can see with the enormous amount of redo that they're doing that it could be significantly more money. So if you are staying as a guest at someone else's house, even if it's your own house and you're going to resell your house later on, let's take this gentleman's advice and go outside to smoke so that we can preserve our house because the house is an enormous investment. And for most people, it's their biggest asset. And so if you're damaging it on a day-to-day -day basis and people come in and they're like, man, we can't sell your house because there's so much tar, you're going to have to go through some serious cleaning processes. Now you know what to do, thanks to this gentleman that sent us this note. But you're going to have to jump through some serious hoops to bring that property back up to resell value. So that's just a, a little word to the wise there. Thanks to our listener for this information. All right, if you found this tip helpful, please pass it on, share it with a friend. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it. Mm -hmm.